My name is Vivek Kumar. I'm an assistant professor at the Jackson Laboratory. I got interested in science doing science fair projects in high school. It just was natural curiosity. Started with small science fair projects and ended up working in a lab at the local uh, university, at the University of Memphis. I'm really interested in how genes control behavior. And uh, as a postdoc, what I did was I looked at a genetic screen in which we essentially look at randomly mutagenized mice and we try and find mice that behave differently because we've changed something genetically in, in them. And so that this is the process of kind of classical genetic screening. Most of us are going to consume a drug with some abuse liability for most of our lives, but only a few of us really become addicted. We know from genetic studies in humans that there's a large uh, genetic component to addiction. And I'm interested in finding out what are these genetic components. I use the mouse as a model system where I explore this question. What are the genetic changes that lead to differences in sensitivity to drug abuse, uh, to differences in complex behaviors such as addiction, such as ADHD and depression? The discovery that we made is, uh, is that there are two sources of um, mouse strains that are commonly used throughout uh, biology. There is a C57 Black 6J, which is housed here at the Jackson Laboratory, and C57 Black 6N, which was shipped from the Jackson Laboratory to NIH in 1951. There's a difference of a single nucleotide that exists in between the two strains that changes sensitivity of an animal to addictive drugs. This gene that's mutated in the Black 6 ends controls neuronal structure, and specifically structure in the nucleus accumbens, a region of the brain that is fundamentally important in addiction. Just looking at the naive Black 6 n and Black 6 j there are these structures in the neurons called dendritic spines. So these are the sites at which chemical signaling takes place between two nerve cells. The number of these spines and the classification of these spines are slightly different. So the shape of these dendritic spines are different. That difference um, in, in signaling leads to a behavioral output that's different between the two strains. You know, I come in to lab because I know that there is a small possibility that day I'll discover something that no one else has discovered. And it's that small chance, but a very real chance of finding something new that gets me up in the morning, that still gets me excited about science and will always get me excited about science. It's that potential for discovery.